Hi everyone, today let's talk about these markets. Then of course we got some stocks to go through, then we'll see how I did on the day and how I'm positioned going into Monday. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. And make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So if you've been watching the markets, you would know the markets rallied really aggressively on a Friday, which is unusual. Most people have been selling on Fridays. They don't want to hold over the weekends has been the trend. But we got a nice little pop here on a Friday. All the major indices went up by quite a bit with the NASDAQ at two and a third. S&P's about the same. Dow Jones a little up almost two and a half. So the Dow was a little bit higher than the rest. Over the course of the week, they did gain quite a bit, almost 5%. NASDAQ was over 5%. And they're saying that this is partially because they think 10-year treasuries have started to slow down and potentially top, which of course would be great for stocks and specifically growth. They mentioned bank stocks rallied really aggressively on Friday with Goldman Sachs up 4.6% and JP Morgan up 5.3%. Again, they highlight they think the hiking cycle might be slowing down. And they mention here, we really need the Fed to pause. Continuing on here, they say a sharp reversal in the 10-year yield on Friday may be a signal that treasuries have started to top out after yields rallied aggressively all week. Moving over to the charts, starting with the S&P 500, you can see we had that big breakout. Stock really shaky in the pre-market, faded off all the way down to 362.30 at one point, and then rallied all the way up to 375 here after hours. So really strong move right at the highs that we saw here on October 18th. Definitely a supply zone right in this consolidation period that we had here in the beginning of October. So if I had to guess, I would say we'll get a little bit of a sell-off, retrace maybe a couple points lower, 1% lower or so, and then I would expect a continuation. There isn't any kind of really strong resistance until we get into this 380, 385 range here on the S&Ps. Moving over here to the NASDAQ, you can see we're right at resistance. The close of day was right at resistance at 275.50. It's showing that it might have popped just above that here in after hours trading. And if you look back here, this is the bottom here for this double top pattern that we had. So again, I expect some resistance in this area. We're getting a little bit off of the moving averages here. I wouldn't be surprised if we got a little bit of a rejection onto Monday, a couple of points lower, maybe in the 272 range, give us an opportunity to enter this trade, and then we get another push breakout through. Or maybe this after hours price action is what's happening, and we get a push in the pre-market Monday, a retest, and then a continuation. That would be the two best case scenarios for me, giving traders an opportunity to get into this rally. I don't think this rally is done yet, but this is pretty extended here in the short term. Moving over here to IWM, you can see we did break out of this region. I wasn't sure here. I thought we might meet some resistance, but we did break out of this kind of downsloping pattern that we had. And by the looks of it, we got just back above that trend that I was looking at before. This looked pretty bearish here for me. Retested right on time with the lows here that we had previously. And then we continued higher. So definitely rallied more than I thought. Closed just at 173 here on the Russell 2000. Moving over to the biggest movers for the day, we got Chewy, another big rally on the day. Open of the day was somewhere around $35, got all the way up to $37, so still lots of volatility here in Chewy, and again, looking like there might be some resistance in the area we are right now. This has been downtrending for quite a while. We have these longer-term downtrend lines that we're starting to retest, so definitely some resistance. That's why I'm a little bit hesitant on these markets right now, but definitely one to keep an eye on. If we do get a retest, a little bit lower into these EMAs and then a continuation higher, that would be a pretty good setup for a trade in my opinion. Moving over to Netflix. I haven't talked about this one since the earnings, but you can see we had that big gap up kind of right in that trend line. You can see we gap just to above it, retested it and continued higher. It's kind of hard to trade things like this. You have to kind of go back and figure out where we might end up. We do have a trend line here that shows we might have resistance here at 340, 341. Uh, but that's a long way from where we are right now at 290. So that would be like 50 points of upside. We also have these bottoms here at 334, which kind of coincides just a few points off of the previous number. So that might be the next resistance point. It's hard to say for sure, but definitely some really strong momentum right now. We'll highlight here that we are getting into overbought territory here on the daily chart for Netflix. Moving over to Lulu here, you can see we had that nice push up right at the end of the day. It was grinding up all day and then a really strong push. 
into that 298.50 level. Again, still kind of in the middle of this trading range. Did get a little bit of a dip, so I got a nice entry on that. And we still have resistance somewhere at 303, 303.50. But in my opinion, I don't think this resistance is going to hold. I expect that we'll get a back above that and start to push closer to that 325 range once we get above this resistance. Moving over to DXY, this is really the star of the show here. You can see we had a big breakout at the beginning of the day. It seemed like it was going higher. The stocks started to sink, but then we got this big reversal candle and then another continuation candle. And then it looks like we're going to be continuing here. We'll highlight that this is the lows. There's potential for some support here. Did hesitate at this level, but if we do get a break right here, and this continues lower or it opens lower, that would be a strong indication that stocks are going to go higher and I will be continuing to trade on the bullish side if we do get that break. Otherwise, there's absolutely potential that we do get a little bit of a bounce, maybe a retest into these EMAs, and then I still expect to see a continuation downward. But remember, the dollar is still very strong. This is a big uptrend. This could be a reversal, but it would not surprise me if we did get at least a retest and then a continuation, even if this is the reversal. Moving over to TLT, you can see we basically were flat on the day after the big gap down. And that's kind of what we were seeing in DXY as well. So DXY had that breakout and then continued down. And I think that's what allowed treasuries to pretty much go flat on the day here. So again, really oversold. You know, we talked about it last time, but we were getting into oversold territory. And then we got all the way down to 13.13 on the RSI, super oversold rating. My expectation here is that we should get at least a little bit of a rebound. This chart is still very weak. This is a pretty oversold rating. And you can see here on the MACD, we did get a little bit of a crossover here after hours and a little bit of bullish momentum. We get a nice little retrace here that should be good for stocks and definitely good for the NASDAQ and growth. Moving over to JNK, you can see we did retest that support and then we did get a nice little bounce off it, getting above almost all of these EMAs here getting above all of these EMAs here. And then I expect that we'll get a nice little rally up to resistance or maybe into this mid range here like we saw on 18 October. But it would certainly be good for stocks if we got a little bit of a rally here in JNK, showing that there is some appetite for risk in the market right now. Finishing up here with the VIX, as we always do, you can see this trend is continuing downwards. We'll definitely throw a trend line on here now. Definitely looking good for stocks. Again, I expect for support in the 27 to 2750 range somewhere in here, which still gives us some pretty good potential for upside in stocks, as long as everything continues in the same direction that it did here on Friday. Moving over to my accounts, if you've been following me, you would know that I was positioned pretty long going into today. So obviously I did pretty well on a good up day and see here netted a little bit over $1,300 today between my two accounts. So on my accounts, I was up only about a percent and a half for the day. And I definitely could have made more money here if I didn't have these calls set so low. Still made a little bit of money on this call here, but definitely this call, I rolled it down a few times and that cost me a little bit of money. And I didn't trade the IWM perfectly either, but, but tomorrow I'll take a look at my weekly roll up and see how we did versus the major indices across the week. And then looking at positions that I have going into this week, I have that one position here on Lulu that's in a small profit right now, total of almost $300 potential profit to buy the stock back down at 285. And then I have one 270 put here on the NASDAQ that's already in a $50 profit out of $104 here. Like I said, I think we'll get a little bit of a dip on Monday and an opportunity to get into stocks on Monday. I don't think it's likely that we're going to stay at the highs where we are right now and continue higher for all day Monday. I think we'll get a nice little opportunity to enter some trades. So I have a lot of money on the sidelines. All of these shares will go to these two covered calls. All of these puts expired worthless. So all of this will go away and then I'll have quite a bit of money and buying power on Monday to either enter some same day options or enter some options for Wednesday expiration. Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you comment down below if there's any stocks that you want me to go over or stocks that I should be paying attention to and comment down below if you made any money on this Friday. It's a nice little update for everybody. Of course, this is not financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.